what's up everyone welcome to another episode of let me finish this is your boy dom this is your boy greg and this is your boy antonio aka tone third of the pod recording live from the bottom district studio recording well, live but when you hear this definitely not <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh you guys it's already february it's crazy. Ain't right? that wild? It is. It, it crazy, was just right? the new year like two weeks ago. Well, I saw online a lot of people like the gist was January lasted forever. And I was like, nah, no. it didn't. It went fast. It went really fast. Oh. But also remember, we're in our 30s. I feel like in Time our 30s, fast for everything year. just is like, it's go, go, go. Oh, and it speeds up the older you get, it's right? Getting, it's getting worse. Man, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it too. Um, but let's check in. February, second month of the year. First month, we were jazzed up, ready to go. We thought we were the king of the world. We feel a little bit like uh, maybe discouraged or we I'm still where we're at. I'm just trying not to get fired from my job in Black History Month. Oh, wow. That would be... <laughs> they couldn't do that. Like, how do you get fired on Black History Month? Yeah, that should be illegal, but I'm trying not to because my job is stressing me out. I'm doing okay, but, you know, it's like like you said, Greg, you kind of get that bump of motivation in January. You're just rearing to go. And then February hits and it's like, oh shit, I got to keep doing this. So I got to keep doing this. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I mean, January went by so fast. I didn't, I feel like I, I got started doing a lot of stuff that a lot of good stuff that I said I wanted to do this year. I kind of hit the ground running on a, on a couple of things. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to where the rest of the year goes, but how's you guys week been? What's been going on? Um, I mean, the week was pretty standard. I, I did kind of have a family emergency that I'm probably going to go back to Abilene for. Everything's going to be okay. Okay. But it's one of those things is like being in your 30s and realizing that, um, Time. you know, th- family members that you think is just going to be there forever, maybe aren't, you know, and it's kind of a sobering realization. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go check in with the, the fam and be there at That's this good. time. But everything's okay. I 100 percent, you know, understand that and uh, prayers for your family. I Thank hope you. everything, you know, continues to go OK. Um, but yeah, like getting older and like seeing like your grandparents and your, your parents and your uncles and aunts and family members in general just getting older it's just like hard to see sometimes you know it's hard to see yeah and then do you ever think about like we don't have kids so yeah who's gonna take care of us exactly yeah I we're gonna know. have to take care of each other i know who's I think, the youngest dom you're yeah. gonna be rolling me around in a wheelchair <laughs> yeah. giving me sponge baths i'm gonna be making a lot of drives apparently <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of nursing homes and really because you're the young one <laughs> i gotta come oh, see y'all i gotta come oh, visit y'all oh bitch is about to die <laughs> that's when we'll be ready to do puzzles with you i know you know what maybe, maybe, we're gonna be trapped maybe that's what it is Lord. yeah well anyway what about your week my week has has been really interesting um work has been great um and i started a new fitness journey uh this week which i can't wait to talk more about in the Bravo. episode um, um, but yeah, that's going okay. And, um, I kind of have like an announcement to make. What? I didn't tell you guys. Surprise. We didn't Memphis talk about and this. You were engaged. You said yes. Exactly. Oh shit. Are you kidding? Oh no. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm officially <gasps> engaged. No way, bro. I'm looking at this. Oh shit. Sure. Ring. Oh, I love oh, the band goodness. and the jeweling. Thank I don't know the words. Wait, I gotta see it. I gotta see it. <laughs> Thank you guys. I really, I really How the hell? I mean, nice, oh my nice. God, this could be the whole topic. Um, <laughs> wait, why did y'all not post on social media? Because they're private. I mean, we've always kind of been pretty private. We yeah. we don't really like post ourselves like that. But there there's been a couple of people that y'all don't follow that did post mm-hmm. uh-uh. about it. Um so there are people uh, It's out of, there. It's out there. People people know and we've been getting a lot of congratulations and our family they know. Um it was it was sweet. That is the best news i did not expect that at all I'm like wow yeah i'm yeah. trying to like be controlled because i'm on the pod and there's a big <laughs> microphone in front of me but yeah. i'd be jumping up and down that's yeah. exciting it, it happened last friday um he was i noticed that memphis was being very secretive about some stuff and i wasn't sure like what he was doing um and then he told me that he wanted to do something nice and cook me dinner and and, and i was like okay he's done it before so yeah. i didn't think anything of it so I went and hung out with uh, one of our good friends, Trent, for a couple of hours, and I got a haircut. And then um, I came back home later, and he had this whole thing set up. He had like a like 
balloons and roses and a whole personal dinner set and no way this romantic music plan it, it was really sweet and i was not expecting it at all i cannot believe it see, but- that's that's good because that's also your vibe too because mm-hmm. i don't see you guys at a restaurant in the middle oh of my like goodness crowded. i would pass yeah. out like my social anxiety <laughs> oh, would right like go reach the, you would the run max. out right you'd be like i can't and like <laughs> shake, shaking and crying it turns into some dramatic thing um but no it, he asked my parents for their blessing and, and I, they said yes they said yes oh, and Lord. He definitely did it the the right way. I was not expecting that at all, and I was like, I need to wait to tell like my my best friends until the podcast on the podcast like, live know, on the pod. That is wow. dope. So, yeah. That is dope. Though. That is a drop. That's like Beyonce at the VMAs announcing that she's <laughs> pregnant by lifting up her like dress or whatever. That's insane. I mean, of course it's so early, but um, right. who are your groomsmen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's just, that's still the conversation. It's I, this was so unexpected, so I don't really know what that situation is going to look like or the ceremony is going to look like. So, um, I mean, I'm 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 excited to get into those details and you know. So destination or local? Local for okay. sure. Okay. For okay. sure. Because you actually want people to show up. Yeah. Yeah. For real. <laughs> yeah. But I'm surprised so. y'all wouldn't do it local, as in back home, right? Well, that's still a conversation. Let's so. do it. I wanted to go somewhere, I'm, and I'm I've down. never been to we'll, Memphis, so we'll see. Same. I'm down. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm excited, but thank you guys uh, for, <sighs> for being excited. You got to follow that tune. That's I was just tough. thinking, like he just dropped a huge bomb, and I'm just like, I was stressed. <laughs> You're out like, I blocked somebody this week. I just, too many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I just went to work and. Got stressed out, almost got shot, you know, shit like that. But you know, normal stuff. Yeah, normal, normal week. It's a normal week in my life. Nothing yeah. crazy. So that's. I yeah, mean, almost getting shot sounds exciting. It's just being in the hood with a camera and a Tesla. You know what I mean? It's just it's not it's not the best combination. But uh, you know, I could see that. Like they're like, why the fuck do you have a camera? Right. Why are you here? Exactly. And this Tesla ain't no charging stations over here. Ain't no charging stations. Ain't no Teslas down there either. So my job has me in the hood on a daily basis, just shooting content, trying to go in these little Jamaican restaurants and getting these bad looks from you know. Aunt Sylvia, it's just ooh, this week's been. But to be fair, everybody at my job is stressed out, and we're all like, actually, last night, me and my coworkers, which I've actually never met, met my coworkers. I've been at my job for ten months. No way. And I was coming back from Fort Worth because I was shooting content in Fort Worth, and one of them was shooting at the Rustic. And he's like, "Hey, if you guys are near around, let me know." So I'm like, "I can be there." It was like fifty minutes away, and we went to the Rustic, and we all met. And actually, there's a photo I got to show. We all parked our Teslas in front of the Rustic and took a photo because <laughs> photographers. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to go home because I'm tired. But it just like it took him 20 minutes to get this photo. But anyway, like I said, work hanging out with some coworkers who I never met, and it was good. So it's always weird. I I did the same thing at my company because I work remote, right? And everybody lives across the country. But it was a year before I met people in person. Mm-hmm. And it's weird because you talk to them on like Zoom calls and stuff and you think that you kind of know them and know how to interact with them. And then you see them in person and it's a whole different, you have to reacclimate yourself to the people in an awkward way yeah, because yeah. the banter's not there. You're kind of like, oh, you're a person. And you're like, you're shorter than I thought. And they're always <laughs> yeah. shorter than I thought. Because yeah. it's different in chatting. Because that's actually one of my things at work. I don't chat with my coworkers on our work chats because mm-hmm. I'm not, if I haven't met you, I'm just not good with like, Engaging. banter yeah, yeah because i need to have a face-to-face interaction so in on chat at work i'm like mute silent but in person i am like jokes fun mm-hmm. so yeah so but it was fun i mean that was at work i so, mean it's it's a virtual world these days so i know I mean, you gotta like but i've never i don't know how to i don't know how to engage you don't say good morning no I wouldn't, wouldn't say good morning. I'm very reactive. I mean, if they reach out to me, I, I got jokes. But, but they, yeah. I mean, my team is pretty like, my team we trying to communicate with each other. Everybody will get online and be like, oh, good morning. I hope you have a good day. Yeah. And then, you know, throughout the day, just somebody may ask a question or ask for help or something. But I mean, the, that's the least you can do is say good morning. Do you know what? Try it on Monday. Like, I, log in, I'm gonna join the don't. group, and then say, good morning, everyone. Have the a great week. But do y'all have, like, a group chat? Would yeah, be- we have three group chats that the same people talk. And so there's times where they're going off in one group chat. And I'm talking about teams, not my personal text. Yeah. They're literally messaging in one group chat. And somebody will respond to something in a different group chat because they forgot what chat is in. That's how bad it is. They just chat all day. And I'm like, I'm out working. I'm trying, yeah. to, I'm trying to be strategic. I'm That's plotting. Terrible. Those. Trying- Try not to get shot. You know, there's a lot going on in my life right now. So I don't have right. time to I'm trying to that. survive in the streets. But <laughs> exactly. um, those those like separate ones with different people in them, they're dangerous, bro. Because somebody because says one the wrong is thing. In, like you create one group chat because yeah. you don't want this other person to be in. And then you end up talking shit about that person. Then you accidentally like, have you ever, yeah. I don't know, Dom, have you ever like about to put something, type something in? 
and realize you're like typing it to the person. Didn't that happen yes. to us one time? I feel like this happened to us at least once. I can't really? remember. I definitely said something about my boss. Ooh. Um, and like I have a chat with like just like some coworkers that I'm cool with that we like you know then like talk about stuff. And then I have one with my team, mm-hmm. and I can't remember. It was during COVID, and it was like I think I was just frustrated, like because he, I had a question. And he was just taking way too long to respond, and then I was like, I had sent a message. I was like. Oh my gosh, my boss, so and so, is just taking forever to respond to my question, and I feel like I'm being ignored. <laughs> and I put it in the main group chat, and he was like, and "I'm sorry, I, you feel like that." And then I deleted Schedule some time with me, and let's talk about it. <laughs> I deleted it as fast as I, I noticed it, and then he sent me like a direct message, and was like, right, "Wow, bitch, I like, saw it." He was like, "I'm sorry, like I didn't mean to, like I'm just in a meeting, I'm busy." I Translation: like, Bitch, I saw that. Bitch, I saw that. And- <laughs> You don't know what I'm doing day to day, so I don't back off. No, but yeah, did you play it so, off? Did I you try to like so make, make it pretend like it was a joke, or you were like, "Oops"? I was just kind of like, "Oops," you know. I just, you know, somebody asked me something, I responded, and I just put it in the wrong group. But he was good. I was me and my boss, the one that my boss at the time. But me and him had a really good relationship, so we it was always that cool banter. Yeah, it was never anything like I had to be like worried about yeah. like oh he's gonna <laughs> like write me up or something no it was never anything like that and i didn't say anything bad i was just kind of yeah like, you yeah. probably would have said it to his face yeah i was like you're He's passive taking, aggressive ass. i've been waiting for like 45 minutes for him to respond to my question as we responded i'm just frustrating but yeah to get his attention for sure tell me about it for sure <laughs> this week every everyone we have a, a interesting topic one that we surprisingly haven't touched on before but we're going to talk about fitness and um, our different, I guess, fitness journeys or where we are with fitness or know what that means, what that looks like, what we enjoy, what we dislike. We're going to get into it all. Where do we want to start? I want to start. Okay. Well, of course you would start. Well, <laughs> I would, can I do a disclaimer real quick? Sure. We're all at different places in fitness. Yes. What I think about fitness is there's no want, wrong way to do it. So if fitness ain't your thing, but you're a loyal listener and you get to this topic and it makes you feel like, ah, I don't even want to work out, work out. Like, I don't want to hear people talk about working out. Just know it's going to be fun. Diversity of opinion, different yes. journeys. So let's start with the militant one. The one that just is fitness all day, every day, 3 a.m. And another disclosure, I'm I'm with the listeners. Everything Antonio says is probably going to be disgusting. Disgusting. So like, just put that disclaimer out there. I yeah. kind of feel like you, you guys are both it. giving disclaimers just for me. Like, it's about me, not us as a podcast. <laughs> right, right, right. I feel, I feel <laughs> a little slighted by that. So. <laughs> but with that regard, <clears throat> excuse me, the reason I wanted to start, because last Sunday, Obviously, the week starts on Sunday. So fitness for me is extremely important, right? It sets the tone, set the tone, sets the the tone tone for, (laughs) it sets the tone for my day. So as an example, Sunday is probably one of my best days for fitness. I love to get up in the morning, go to the gym. And right now when the weather's decent enough. On Sunday? Yeah. Oh, so when I'm at church. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Church. <laughs> Church. Bush, bro. Yeah, I love to start on Sundays. And like, so example, last Sunday, I did my normal gym routine, me and a friend work out. And then we also went on like a 35 mile bike ride. So I ended up burning like 2300 calories. Now, of course, that is not an everyday thing, but that's something I love to do. And to me, that kind of sets the mood for my week, because when I have a good workout and I get those endorphins going, I get that sweat going. I don't know what it does. It mentally just prepares me for a better week. Okay. Even in the morning, because we all know I've talked about it. Everybody knows. I go. <laughs> <laughs> everybody Everyone, knows this. Yeah. Hey, if everybody knows Dom's anemic, everybody knows I wake up at 3.45, 4 a.m., right? Yeah, you're capping. You do not. That's the wild 3.45, do you really? First of all, I don't fall asleep sometimes until 12.31. I stay up until 3 a.m. watching Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Smith last I night. can show proof of my gym check-ins on my gym app. But we're not that <laughs> worried about it. <laughs> Again, you call me militant, and there's a reason you say that. But no, on, on some real shit. Like it sounds weird to a lot of people when I say like I wake up at 4 a.m. I'm at the gym by 4:30 or 5, and I'm out by 7. But for some reason, for me, like on days when I just sleep in or wake up, and then I'm just like, oh, I gotta make breakfast and whatever. Something about the gym for me clears my mind. So there's the physical a- effects of it, aspects of it, but also for me, there's a 50-50 physical and mental. I just feel better when I work out. And of course, I'm not every day. I do, I do take breaks. There's days like I didn't go this morning because I need to do some work and I need to come here with you guys to get this pie going. Yeah. But um, for fitness for me is just it's 
kind of a lifestyle of mm-hmm. sorts. It's part of my personality in a sense, I guess, if that makes sense. I have a question. Yes, I may have an answer. <laughs> can you can you walk us through the timeline of what you do? Because oh, yeah. what do you do if you get there at three or four o'clock in the morning? What is your routine? Yeah, break this down the routine. Because yeah. something that I have a hard time doing is sticking to a weekly routine. Like I'll go to CG one like Monday and then I'll do like lift Tuesday. Yeah. Like it's all just kind of like when I can. Yeah. So you seem like somebody that's like, you do legs on Monday or you do this, you do cardio on yeah. Wednesday. Like how's it shake so, out? So when we say routine, there's two ways to talk about it. There's like my routine of getting up, what I do to get to the gym before, and then there's like my workout routine, right? Walk us through the whole thing, Antonio. All right. Starting at 3 a.m. Yeah, all I got right. my so, coffee. Yeah, I won't fall asleep. All right, so let me clarify. Right. So, okay, the alarm is usually set for 3.45 to 4 a.m. Now, with my alarm, I use this app that has like a gradual, like, it didn't just like 3.45 a.m. It's like loud blaring. It just kind of eases you into it. So, you, you kind of wake up in like a calm, like ease it's like a nice little soft music tone kind of like okay. up, upbeat right i okay. wake up pause real quick yep i the hardest i love waking up at five in the morning i would never wake up earlier than that it's okay nasty Fair. yeah but disgusting. i'm the one that's like have to set my alarm in the other room my alexa is like 5 a.m 505 a.m 515 a.m 530 a.m oh yeah yeah You're and then the next one starts at 8 a.m if i don't make any of the five ones then i'm just going that's to wild Greg. it's not happening so how do you wake up? That's that's my biggest question. It's I me- just get up it's as mental. soon as it goes off. It's mental. You have to get. So for me, the hardest part of getting up is literally getting out of bed. Yeah. Because I wake up, I hear the alarm and there's times I'll hit snooze, but I try not to hit more than once because the more I hit snooze, the more likely I'm not getting up. So I have I allow myself one snooze and you have to get up. And once I get up and go to the bathroom, wash my face and brush my teeth, You're up. then I'm good. That's the, that honestly is weird. That's the hardest part. But once I'm up, everything else is like game work. See, that's in theory, it's like, yeah, just wake up when your alarm goes off. Yeah. But like, I'm a different person. Sleepy Greg yeah. oh, is a, mm, his personality is like Jekyll and Hyde. He's like, no, fuck, know. fuck today. We know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know? We know. <laughs> okay. So you gradually get up. And yeah. Then- gradually quickly, gradually get up. So the first thing I do is hit the, hit the restroom and then wash my face, brush my teeth. And then I, then I go to the kitchen. You always start your day with water. You should never have anything in the morning before water Mm -hmm. so a little bit of water and then i do my ag1 health powder which is good for like your like probiotics good for your stomach your gut and your mental focus send me a referral code bro oh i got you i got you yeah yeah yeah. you get like some free stuff with it and you will too probably yeah (laughs) so i start with my ag1 my water um i so funny thing is i typically don't eat in the morning which people think i'm insane for I don't eat in the morning i don't either there's something about just making some eggs in the morning which is kind of disgusting yeah, I, just, I don't want eggs four in the morning, right? So I don't eat breakfast. So I have my water. Um, I do my drops. Uh, I have this uh, mushroom, these mushroom drops. I do my thesis pills, my vitamins. Mushroom drops? Put me on, bro. Give me the referral. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I don't know if they work, though. So I do my prep. I'll That's my normal them, pill routine. And then I'm out the door. So my gym is packed the night before. So all I do is wake up, drink my water, take my pills, get dressed, grab the bag, out the door. Okay. So I get to the gym. First thing I do is this might be a little TMI. Automatic bathroom. Shit. Yeah. No, that's not TMI. My okay. my body knows like hey, bowel movements right. is an important part of this. Yeah. So bowel movement. <laughs> but do you have to do it at the gym? Yeah. Like the I love going at home. I do it bro. more at the gym than I do at home. That's why I, actually, wild I shower more at the gym than I do at home, actually. Um that's not as wild as the pooping part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that and then I do I, I do a mow before I actually work out and that could be like a brisk walk stay whatever what's but a, mow? a mow like running a walk cardio oh, okay 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 yeah I try to do a mow of cardio before my workout a then, mile, mile yeah I'm sorry cardio. a mow okay and then I do my workout like, this is fitness term I don't know <laughs> yes <laughs> and then I do my workout which should take me about forty five to fifty five minutes just my actual workout and you know I'm obviously not working out the entire time there's like little breaks in between but you know you work out. And then I hit the sauna for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now, that sauna includes dry and steam sauna sometimes. But 20 mm-hmm. to 30 minutes in the sauna, and then I shower, and then I'm out the door. That's my day. Wow. So how long total are you at the gym? It usually ends up being around two hours. Okay. Everything takes about two hours. Damn. From and the you're time I'm in the door. Early enough where it's, there's not that many people, right? If I get there when I want to get there, like by five o'clock, I beat like that morning before work. Right? So you get okay. all the weights before. Yeah. Cause once like seven ish hits, it gets like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 637 is like crazy. So, okay. 
That's okay. my routine, but I can imagine you leaving and being like, I can do fucking anything, bro. Yeah, yeah you feel like, I'm gonna yeah. Get sh- I don't care about if I get shot. I'll dodge those bullets, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's kind of wild. Like, sometimes I look at my Apple Watch that I always track my calories on, and mm-hmm. when you start, when it's like 8 p.m., and most people are just waking up, and I'm like, damn, I'm already burned 800 calories. That's kind of like, for me, that's a good feeling. I'm like, yeah. all right, like, you got this day. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like waking up super early. I don't do the fitness in the morning. Um it's crazy to me that you live like lift heavy weights on an empty stomach. I don't know how, yeah, because people say that and I just, it doesn't bother me, but I've always trained myself because I used to do a lot of uh, intermittent fasting. Like I did it religiously for a couple of years and I think my body just got trained to just not eat in the morning. So I may have a banana every now and then. I may have a little thing of yogurt, which is like less than a hundred calories. But mm-hmm. if anything, I don't, I never have heavy food in my stomach in the morning because I cannot work out with like food on me. It's just I, guess so I just got so hungry all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> you just said yogurts and bananas. It's not like is anything good. I just say pizza or hot dogs. Yep. Yeah. But my, you eat after um, that, right? Yeah, yeah. Afterwards. Well, I have my protein shake right after I finish working out before I hit the sauna. So there's a protein shake. Um, and yeah, that's and then I'll eat eventually later down the line, but protein shake, and then I'll try to have something light afterwards. That's very interesting having a more in depth view of, of your Insan- daily insanity journey. and insanity. fucking insanity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I think for me, like, I have a more realistic situation. Mm-hmm. Well, not not currently, but um, for me, like, I hadn't really worked out for a very long time as far as going to a gym and doing all of that. like Right after college, I went to, started going to the gym, and then I got a personal trainer who I really liked that I met with uh, two times a week, and I probably did that for like three months, and I really enjoyed it, and then I moved to Texas, so I had to stop doing that, mm-hmm. and then me and my ex would go to the gym every, you know, once in a while together, but then after we broke up, it's just kind of like, I found other ways to stay somewhat active and i would count that towards my fitness journey so i would play kickball every every season i would do summer winter fall yep i would uh started playing volleyball and i did started doing that every single season three times a year um i'm playing volleyball multiple times a week Mm -hmm. and so i'm like doing stuff that would keep me active but now I i didn't really categorize as fitness you know? I mean, I think it 100% is. And I always respect people that are like, I hate working out, but mm-hmm. I do volleyball. Or yeah. I do one this activity that keeps me active. And it's actually like team building and like fun and competitive, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like I get out and do something. And it's fun. I, like, I'm a competitive person. So if I'm doing something fun and competitive like that, I'm more interested in like the workout, the fitness portion of it. Mm-hmm. Um, now that I'm not playing volleyball, I... <laughs> have started a new fitness journey okay. Okay. something that keeps me active during you gotta this get ready for the wedding you know <laughs> Lord. and so me and memphis have a trainer wow okay um how did we, you find your trainer if you don't mind me instagram instagram okay. we searched around i went to multiple websites one thing that stood out about my particular trainer is that he had a lot of like like results on his page or like testimonies from people Mm -hmm. and all of the reviews that he got were all really great reviews. And um, the center that we go to is a personal facility to where you can only be in there if you're working out with your trainer. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like that. And it's actually not too far from here. It's close to here. It's called uh, self-made fitness. I believe Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's really, really, really nice fucking gym. Um, and we are going three times a week, three times a week. So we go Monday, Tuesday, uh, we do our own cardio on Wednesday. We go, um, our third session is on Thursday and then Friday we have a break. I got up this morning and did cardio as my second day. And What'd you do? Elliptical and treadmill. Nice. And then yeah, to your apartment gym. Yeah. That's what's up. And then I'm going to go back in the morning and do more cardio. So. I haven't worked out this many days in a row in a long time. Yeah. So my body is really fucking sore. Sore. Right yeah. now. <laughs> is, is this week one of you doing this? This is our first week. Yeah. So your body's first like, what are you week. doing to me? Like Monday was our first week. And it was like, we're doing legs today and doing. So what are y'all, are y'all on like uh, barbells? Are you doing like dumbbells? How's it? Bands. We're doing everything. Okay. Yeah. Everything. Uh, machines, dumbbars. Um, he has us doing like mat shit, 
and yeah, <laughs> calisthenics. Yeah, right. It's just, it's really nice. It, it, he knows what he's doing, and we have like a nutritionalist that comes with it, and we have meal plans. We got a grocery list that they provided. So that's legit. Yeah, we've been meal prepping and is doing all this stuff is it all more week. Two hundred dollars a month. Yes, it is. But we go three times a week. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. But you're getting a lot. And we yeah, get a that's lot. Just, that's a service. Lot yeah. For yeah. the service. So it's, it's, it's been great so far. I have a new appreciation for people who do fucking deadlifts. Because yeah. I have never done a deadlift in <laughs> really? my life until Thursday. For real. And it probably was the worst. Yeah. I, almost, I feel like I was about to pass out. Really? Yeah. I love deadlifts. And it's, it's hard like, to get the form right, though. It's like, form, oh, yeah. It feels like you're, it's like when you see it, it's like, okay, they're just standing up with, with weights. You but know, like, how hard can it. that be? Yeah. But then when you actually do it and trying to do it correctly and making sure your back is arched and your legs are bent, your butt is down, like all of that stuff is like, it's a lot. It's a lot. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, um, I'm, we're going through this journey. We three times a week and, yeah, I think it's good that it's like you and Memphis doing it together. Cause accountability. I think, yeah, because I mean, you yeah. have your trainer that you're paying for as accountability, but you also have the person along the journey with you. And I think that right. does help, especially if you both are starting off. And I'm not sure, has Memphis worked out before? Has he ever? No, he's never off? had a trainer. Okay. I mean, he would go to the gym. Here and there. Here and there, yeah. but nothing like this. This yeah. is like, this is, this is a lot for him. Yeah. So yeah, we're going through it and and it's it's been great so far. Like I feel good and it's just, you know, the struggle of, like I'm really bad about like eating three times a day. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like you like don't you said, eat three times a day, or you normally like- I wouldn't. Like okay. I'm not a breakfast person. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would just drink water and just like I don't know, continue Five. on until lunch. And he's yeah. like your body needs those <laughs> nutrients in the morning, right? To kind of keep, especially if you're, if, if you're working out later after work, I assume. Then you need that fuel throughout the day to kind right. of have that energy. So I don't pass out during the workout or something. But yeah, like eating and portion sizing, and like I have a food scale. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. scaling out food. And Greg, that. I was going to ask, have you ever had a personal trainer? Like, I don't consider, because Greg does um, See, camp, camp gladiator, gladiator, yeah. Which is not like a personal trainer, but it's no, a group thing. It's a group, it's a group training or fitness. It's, it's a group fitness class. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But a personal trainer, I think I talked about it last episode. Oh, he, yeah. wanted to, he wanted to pray with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I only went once that. there. And then um, <laughs> what else? Yeah, no, I've never really had personal trainers. My thing is I always just wanted them to like write out the work workout with me weekly yeah. or meet with them once and then, or them give me the meal plan. And I don't then just know, do I it never yourself. found like a whole package, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. need like the in gym training. Right. But that sounds like legit, yeah. you know, and I would like to get a personal trainer just to like maybe some hacks mm-hmm. to like grow in certain areas. Yeah. You know, I always had a flat butt. I, I've always had a flat kinda, butt. Ooh, I got to transition about that later. But yeah. So like basically my fitness journey is I have to do it for my health. Right. Yeah. Because I'm diabetic. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was always before it was just kind of like. I was all over the place. Like, I think when I was like in my 20s in college, I would just run a lot. I didn't really lift. Right. And then in like my mid 20s, I was like, I want to pump up. And I got those first time gains. Right. I was eating dirty, though. So I got kind of a belly. Turns out later I had like diabetes two, which mm-hmm. turns out to be diabetes one after mm-hmm. I lost all that like muscle fatty yeah. weight. Mm-hmm. And so I got really skinny and then I got all these diabetes meds can't gain back the muscle but yeah. anyways in dallas i did like this hit place i did crossfit a little bit and then i found this place called camp gladiator my sister actually put me onto it and it's interesting because you don't go to a set gym right mm-hmm. you have an app and there's different classes at different parks all over the city right? oh that's cool yeah so it's like different trainers different groups of people and you bring your own mat and you bring your own weights and obviously water ball, towel, whatever you need. Right. But it's cool because one, you get outside working from home. You don't mm-hmm. necessarily see the sunlight sometime. Uh-huh. Two, it's good to connect with people. Right. I, I didn't really like like the community, like meeting people aspect because I used to live in Uptown. So I went mm-hmm. to all those. But now that I live over here in kind of Bishop Arts area, there's a class at Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. Yeah. Shout out Albert, our coach. And we got like a good crew and they're all solid, you know, and we mm-hmm. do stuff like outside of it. I had a party here. Um, so just like the community thing yeah. is something that I never really thought I liked because like I'm at the gym and I am just focused on my weight. I don't even peek at like hot, bo- like hot butts, like anything like that. Yeah. I'm just like focused. laser focus. Yeah. And I would used to go to like CrossFit class and I was like not wanting to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. Like I 
get there late, leave early. <laughs> but now that it's like you actually talk to people and you have people that keep you accountable, like this morning, for example, 9 a.m. class, I never go. And then our little group chat, they were like, are you coming? And just throwing it out there, who's coming? And I was like, I am. And everybody was so shocked because I never, they never see you there at 9 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it's, I think I started my fitness journey because I wanted to look good. I wanted to like look a certain way. Mm. And then it turned out I had to do it for my health. Right. Yeah. But then also the mental health aspects, I think, is what keeps me like actually coming back more than anything. Right. Yeah. Because I'm always going to be the same level of like, meh. you know, mm-hmm. I think the thing about fitness is me. I'm never going to obtain that like perfect body that I think that I want. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to be like some months I'm going to be a little bit chunkier. I'm going to be skinnier. I'm going to yeah. be a little bit mus. I'm going to look good for a couple months. <laughs> Usually it's the first of the year because that's when I'm like you said a couple motivated months. and stuff. Right. Yeah. But more than anything, it's just about like the endorphins that are released. Mm-hmm. Like the I've family. gone, had the worst day. Like, and I, I usually do it at nighttime. I don't, I need to get on like the morning train, but I've had the worst day. I've been stressed about something. I've been just like in my mind going over the same thing. that's like bothering me or something. Mm -hmm. You get that sweat. Right. And it just like your pores start tingling and you're just kind of like, okay, I can take on another day. I have a question for you both. Yeah. So do you guys feel like there was a, a portion or like... I know what you're about to ask. Like, when did you, uh, I don't know if, uh, Greg, I don't know if, if if you are in love, but when did you, I'm like, definitely not in love. <laughs> when did you, it's a situation like, shift, fall into like love or enjoyment when it, when it comes to fitness? Because that's a, that's my struggle. Like, I want to get to the point to where I just love you to enjoy do it. it. Like, I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I, I enjoy afterwards. And sometimes mm-hmm. I enjoy when I'm in it, mm-hmm. but, for me, it's become this thing of like what y'all were talking about with the alarms where mm-hmm, your mm-hmm. alarm goes on off and you just got to get up. Mm-hmm. It's become a thing where I'm like just do it. this inside me, like this resistance that I don't want to do it. And I'm like, you just got to do it. You, you know, push past. But it. sometimes that voice wins. I'm not <laughs> yeah. <gonna. laughs> now, my uh, the first time I fell in love with it, my let's talk about my fitness journey when it started. My fitness journey started because of depression. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I was like really young and mm-hmm. I remember I was dating this guy and this was probably one of my really, maybe like my second or third relationship where it, it got very serious. It got to the point where like all my friends who I grew up with and went to school with knew this guy. We were all like hanging out together. Yeah. Long story short, we broke up and I remember <laughs> I had just moved to this place by myself. I'm sitting one day I'm sitting. Moved to where? Uh, I still lived in back, back in Atlanta at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sitting on the floor. I had like no furniture. I had like a little, 20 something inch TV. I'm just watching Netflix on some bullshit. This is when Netflix had DVDs were old. I know. <laughs> right. And I remember I go on Facebook and all my friends are at my ex's place, like partying. And these are my friends I went to school with. And mm-hmm. my ex was older than me. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And I got like, <laughs> I went into the deepest, darkest depths of depression. And I just remember I'm home when I'm like, all my friends are fucking with him. They're not fucking with me. Wait, so all your friends became friends with him? Yeah, they were hanging out with him more than me. Oh, so wow. been there. They, right, you weren't so included? No, nobody texted me. Nobody called me. It was, it, it, well, it was at his house, so that's why. Too. What? So, yeah. um, so anyway, I'm home late night, and I'm like, I can't sleep. I'm stressed out, and I don't know why or how this even happened. I remember our, my job I had, there was a 24-hour gym nearby, and I would always drive by and look at it, and I'm like, I just went to the gym. Mm-hmm. And somehow there was somebody there. They let me join the gym at like 11, 12 midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked out. So I used to work out at midnight when I first started. But I just remember that feeling like of being super depressed and stressed out. And that was the first time I'm like, oh, I feel a lot better. And that's what started it. So that's when it became mental where like it makes me feel a lot better. Just so it was years in the making for you. Yeah. Uh, when you say years in the making. I mean, did you like, get it you, hard? You joined that gym immediately you became militant or was it a journey? The militant thing came later. It was just. I d- did it. It felt good. I'm like, I want to keep doing this. And then, like you said, you said something early. You, when you first work out, you have those instant like gains. Like you get a six pack out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Granted, I was 21, and your yeah. pecs are popping and your arms look great. I'm like, I didn't even do anything. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. So there is a there is a <laughs> physical aspect of it too. That's like, I like the way I look. So mm-hmm. there is that part of it too, which is it's vain, but it is what it is. Have you ever mm-hmm. taken a break? Like I when I say it, break, like yeah. have you ever went a whole year? Oh God, no. Okay, no, that's like never. A, no, like month. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've wow. taken a week or two off when yeah. I get sick. Mm-hmm. Probably the most is two weeks, but it's usually because I was sick or something like they're traveling. When I was traveling, for, I cannot work out on the road. So Me traveling either, is, yeah. 
So that's kind of my fitness journey. I kind of forgot. What you're it's kind of what? poignant. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of beautiful that I've never, I've always been like, Tone, what are your body goals? Because he's like, I'm going to burn 2,000 calories a day. And I'm like, but what, is, what, what are you, are you trying you, to what are you trying achieve? Like, so like hearing this makes it like make sense, makes sense in the sense that like, you felt like you had nothing and you found fitness at midnight. Like that's beautiful. You yeah. know, you didn't find mm-hmm. shit at the bottom of the bottle or like you didn't yeah. hop into bed with somebody or like you went to the gym, gym. and you did and it, it saved your life. You did it young too. Yeah. Pretty like, early for me. Like I, when I was younger, I was not thinking about going to didn't the gym have to baby at all. No, I didn't. And have to. it was kind of like, um, I grew up playing sports yeah. and, you know, doing that kind of thing, which makes sense to why I have more enjoyment in the activities, those type type of fitnesses. So, dang, it's like it's unpacking that. Unpacking that and like getting to know each other a little bit better. The hardest thing for me, yeah, harder than working out is eating yes bro. eating is the worst food is a struggle. It's been, I've been struggling all week. We've been eating ground turkey, broccoli. Grilled chicken, sweet potatoes. Wow! Like porcelain sauce and stuff. I am so hungry. I bet you are on the standard. I'm snacking, of, yeah. I'm snacking on. Carrots. You have to have a cheat day. Yeah. Did did your did they tell you that you have to have that one cheat day? Because if you don't, what's going to happen is when you finally break, mm-hmm. you're going to like break insanely hard. So you yeah. have to like one day this out. weekend, either t- today or tomorrow is going to be our cheat day. But it's just like we. I'm really proud of us because like. We've really like hit the ground running and have really like not wavered from it. Mm. Yeah. I wanted fr- French fries so bad last night. <laughs> oh, I was man. like, I just want a medium <laughs> fry. And I was like, no, where were I'm you gonna, at? I'm gonna snack on these carrots. Oh no, you so put them in ranch, eating, eating carrots. I love that for you, like a little ranch, not too much, but yeah, I'm just it's just Listen, I have to, yeah, to be honest. It's not sustainable it's to not. always live like that. It's but, not. But you setting this intention and like going all in, you know, for however long you mm-hmm. can last doing it is you're setting up good habits to where if you get back into a point where you're not getting the meal plan for the guy or y'all are trying to do it on your own. I'm more mindful. And you're like maybe going to the drive through a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like at least you have that knowledge of what you were, what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is what I'll say. I live off the uh, thought of moderation because mm-hmm. like you said, what you're doing is great. And Greg, is, we're not trying to discourage you by saying it's not. Oh, stable, no. But no, I'm just saying like you're, you're setting up healthy habits. And that's, yes. Yeah. So I'm a moderation guy. Like I'll always say like, I don't believe in the term diet. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to have certain dietary restrictions, but right. I've never said, okay, I'm doing the, whatever the Atkins diet or whatever diet <laughs> I'm going to have pizza. Yeah. Not every week, but I'm going to have pizza. I'm shout, have out, pizza. shout out Keith Lee, by the way. I'm going to have pizza. Shout out what? Keith Lee. We'll, What's that? We'll talk about that later. He, yeah, he doesn't know. Yeah, Why so not? Zalat. We'll talk about it later. Later, later. Oh, Keith Lee. Yeah, yeah. and I'm also invested in Zalat. That's what I'm so. saying. Zalat. You should shout out Zalat. Shout out Zalat. Um, I'm not until they sponsor us. Oh, uh, true. But one day, one day, <laughs> one day. day. Let's just one positive day. intent. We're gonna, we're gonna draft that email. Yeah, positive yeah. intent. Shout out Zalat. But yeah, I'm gonna have pizza every now. Not every day, but I'm gonna try to eat moderately well. I'm gonna have shakes every now and then. I'm gonna try to drink more water, but there's gonna be times I'm gonna have a burger. I'm gonna have wings, but I just try to moderate, and that's yeah. how I live because you know moderation. I got a tattoo. This is moderation on my chest. You do. Uh, moder- and I have it because I'm not good at moderation. That's what that's it. Really? <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I've seen the tattoo, but I've never, you never, I've never looked knew, at it. Like, when yeah. they were giving it to me, they almost messed it up because it's in cursive. Okay. And like he was about to start drilling and it said maturation, like with an A instead of like O no, right there. And that, that would have been a whole different story. Um, but anyways, moderation is hard for me. I love sugary drinks. I like Sonic. Uh, I live he loves dangerously. A, he loves a Sonic. Close to Sonic. You love it. What is the, it? Ocean water? Yeah, tell the ocean people water. your uh, your Sonic you Order. Know, drink of choice. Well, lately I've been getting the, um, if I'm feeling, you know, nasty, I'll get the, <laughs> <laughs> they have a cranberry cherry limeade or a cranberry limeade, basically. Okay. Yeah, so I've it's never good. Had that. And it, you know, cranberry juice is like detox. So I feel like I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm getting a detox. There is no um, real cranberry in that. <laughs> definitely not. And then also I like the uh, slush. I get a cherry um, lime slush, mm-hmm. but um, I'm diabetic, so I can't yeah, have sugar. Good. Like you gotta be careful. I can't, even when I cheat meal, it's like stuff that I'm not supposed to be having. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, my struggle, I think, is I'm trying to cook more and 
cooking just don't come naturally to me. I'm actually like looking for a chef. If you're a listener and you're a chef and you like the sound of my voice and want to see some nudes. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Greg, we you're should, not, we you're should, not trading we should go for to a cooking class one day. You know oh, what? We should yeah. we should do a cooking class this spring yeah. or summer. Actually, my, fun, there's this little community center right around the corner and they have like a cooking with diabetes class. Oh, well, yeah, I'll go with you. I'd if probably you want to go there, if, it'd be like all. If you want to go, we'll go with ladies. you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's every Tuesday. Okay. Every? Do we have to bring I mean, something? you don't have to go every oh, Tuesday. Well, I can't because I got training. I actually, training? What kind of? He just said his personal training. My personal oh, training. Oh, yeah. training. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so, good. we may have to find something else. But I Does your trainer look good? good? Yes. I was going to ask that, but I was like, I ain't Did y'all both it. vote? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, so this, <laughs> so I found the website and this facility, you know, like I mentioned before, you can't go there unless you have a trainer with you. So I, they have like 35 trainers to pick from. Wow. So I just went through like all of their Instagram pages. You're like, woman, no, see. no woman, no woman. Is that, is that, <laughs> okay, never mind. No, I'm going to say, is that bad? That no, I, didn't know I don't think so. I, I, I think, I it think is. it's motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Because there have been times I remember, I, I used to work at a 24-hour fitness or one of those small smaller gyms. And I remember seeing trainers that, I think your trainer has to be, at least the look has to be motivating. If you are if you don't look motivated looking at your trainer, that's going to affect you a little bit. Because I've seen trainers who are like out of shape. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I, I don't get it, but you know. I mean, I get it. I'm sure their instruction is good, but right. you gotta, you, you're gotta your own personal calling card, I think, with that. And yeah. Because so like, as a personal trainer, like you are the advertisement. Like, right. If this don't look right, then I'm like, well, what am I doing with yeah, you? Yeah, you know I'm I mean? like, so, if it didn't work for you, then, Domus, oh, you're giving me the pick. I'm Domus showing us. It, 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 is, it, is, it is motivation. Oh, wow. Greg might give him a call now. Back. And he's he's really nice, yeah. too. That's, oh, yeah, that's the thing. Oh, yeah, he looks nice. He so. looks really nice. <laughs> Greg's about to hit follow. Yeah. Let me see what you got. See what you're working with. Ooh, I hit, sorry, I hit a button. We don't have video. We're just uh, doing an IG share. Yeah. Page. But yeah, so it's it's a new journey. Explain him to the listeners. What does he look like? I'm not. No, I'm don't. Not doing, oh. I don't know how to describe people. Um, he, he looks, looks like, like Desmond Bain. Oh, he does kind of look like Desmond Bain. He looks like a young, slim thug in shape. Kind of. He's got slim thug face. That's Why am I not dog. picturing that? A little, uh, somewhat no but he's a he has a thick muscular build he used to be skinny wow nice body though he's got a lot of videos i'll check out his content looks good though yeah he's and he's really nice and he's a family guy he just does a lot of good work so i'm i'm excited about this journey i'm on but it is hard and the, the eating portion is hard. very it's hard. hard. Yeah. The cooking portion is hard. Cooking Speaking portion. of eating, I mean, cooking portion isn't that hard when yeah. you're like cooking grilled chicken. Yeah, it depends what you're turkey, eating. right? <laughs> with yeah. no no cheese, no nothing. But it's it's just, I want to get creative with it. Like not just the a, same. a lot yeah. that we can have. Like I've I had egg whites for the first time. You never week. had egg whites? Really? No, never had egg wow. whites, and I love egg whites yeah, now. Right. Really? They're, yeah. Do you buy them in a carton really or? No, yeah, in a carton. Yeah, but you know they're they're really good. I That's really hard like hardcore. I mean, oatmeal like hard oatmeal is very sentimental for me because <laughs> my grandma that lived across the street from from where I grew up, she that was one of the things she would make us for breakfast. That's she would sweet. make eggs, biscuits, oatmeal, and her oatmeal was just like top tier, fire. Right? You know, and every oatmeal I've tried can never like be compared. To well, hers. also she probably made it <laughs> yummy. For yeah. Her. And dummy it's, and it's just like you know not, real not my grandmother is isn't like here it's like i can't have that oatmeal anymore but i did you know buy some quick grow oatmeals and it was apple cinnamon flavored and it wasn't it wasn't bad it i wasn't got some oatmeal you can have it's just regular original flavor okay i'm not gonna use it and the never goes bad so okay yeah definitely i get that being creative because right now what you described what you guys are eating that's like almost uh workout meal prep 101 like the chicken sweet, sweet potato which is basic but eventually actually one thing i i remember when i was on instagram heavy I started following fitness pages, and then once you follow fitness pages, you start to get the uh, reels of the fitness shelves. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to find some cool recipes. Is like, yeah, somebody yeah. put me on to somebody, and you had two. Yeah, um, yeah. He has an app that we like track our calories and stuff through, mm -hmm. and it actually has like an area on it to where it like has like meals that we can like okay look at and swap at, swap through and stuff. Yeah. So they they definitely give you like different. 
options options yeah. as far as like what you can do it's just yeah. about like sitting down and doing it yeah you For gotta real. do it but and just just like if you're ever scrolling on instagram that's where i found a lot of fun recipes just to, yeah and they, and they were like, like different simple. ones like, yeah I, yeah i follow this one guy and it's like high protein like it's like high protein lasagna and it's yeah. like 60 grams of protein per serving or some shit like that I mean, I think that you're doing it so right in the terms of like foundational learning all everything that you need to know. Cause mm-hmm. I gotta say, like, I don't know about you, Tone. My fitness journey has been like embarrassing in the beginning. You know, you get in the gym and you don't know what you're doing. Like I, I used to get injured so much. I think bro. I, yeah. My look I looked because my like heel's been hurting, plantar fasciitis, shout out. And um, I looked in this little. <laughs> Did you shout out plantar fasciitis? <laughs> shout yeah. out to all the people that are afflicted by plantar fasciitis. <laughs> Facts. Okay, but I was like looking for like a little foot brace, and I had this little like container, and it had like a uh, shoulder brace, a uh, knee brace, an ankle brace. Like I was just getting injured right and left. So I'm glad I started it in my like twenties. Like twenties when yeah. I was like could bounce back quickly because bro, I can't get injured today. I, you know what? That's that's a very. I'm glad you brought that up because in one of our sessions when we were doing like the deadlifts and stuff, my back was hurting so bad, mm-hmm. and he was like, "It's gonna hurt right now, you know, but you're doing it right because your form is right." He was like, "I promise you, when you get up in the morning, your back won't be hurting. It doesn't, and it doesn't hurt, and mm-hmm. that that's like so. Why it's so important to make sure that you are doing it right? Yeah." And that's and that's another question I was going to ask you guys. Like, have you ever felt like intimidated going to the gym? Because I know for someone like me who isn't too comfortable going and knowing the feeling like I know what I'm doing, it can point. be very intimidating. So, yeah, for you guys, do you, is there a point to where you ever felt that way? Oh, yeah. all the time. Yes. For me, it's always been going to like a new gym that mm-hmm. I've not gone to because once you go to gym for a while, you get acclimated to the people around you. Mm-hmm. But it's always been me going to a different gym. Like, you know, if I go back to Atlanta to see my family, when I go to the gym there, it just feels different. It feels mm-hmm. like everybody's in shape. But what happens with that is that there's some point where you realize that everybody's on their own journey. And if you start to really look around at the gym, most people aren't looking at anybody but themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. And you if also, if you're very observant like I am, you notice that this guy has an average body. This guy's overweight. This girl's skinny. This person's muscular. There's all types of people there. Mm-hmm. And like, there's some people that go to the gym so just, just for cardio. people in the gym. No, no, no. no. <laughs> God, it sounds like that. If it you're observing like, like I am, this guy's <laughs> fat. <laughs> I don't observe. I observe people who are in fit, like who are like fit and like man, like that's probably that all person you see. knows like what they're doing. Like yeah. look at them over there, like right. they're just lifting so much weight, and it's like and that's the problem. That's here probably, I am with my little twenty five yeah. pound yeah, dumbbell. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and that's the problem. Like I think when you first start off, you only see that person. When you realize, if you look at the to- to- totality of it all. There's all types of people in that gym and everybody's at a different journey. Like you can tell somebody just started, somebody has been going there for years because there's people I've seen at the gym for years, same mm-hmm. people. So it's just, you realize that just, you have to like figure out how to block that out and realize we're all on our journey. But yes, yeah, so, I, I still do it again to me. There's always some guy lifting crazy. I'm just like, <laughs> Yeah, my, have you guys seen those crazy ass like oh, videos? Oh, like running on the treadmill. And or they're like, like lifting like workout material equipment oh yeah like, it's like yeah. a guy on the treadmill lifting like a bench or some shit like that like <laughs> and it's just like what are y'all training what for what are y'all no. doing right what, what is this war for? is coming that we don't yeah. know about yeah. those World are the three those are the people we're talking about oh right there. we don't I mean, have those no i yeah. don't yeah no no it's very intimidating <laughs> very intimidating bro like there was when i first started going to the gym i just stayed around like the little machines right i would wait until <laughs> one was open i would never use a barbell right yeah and so to the point that like during COVID, I got my own like weight set right, yeah. in the garage. So that's like how I kind of, I do CG like twice a week and then I'll lift in there. Okay. Um, but like intimidation. Yeah. I get intimidated. I compare myself to others. I feel like everyone's looking at me. I hate when like somebody's waiting on you and you got some light ass <laughs> weights on there and that's, they're like, that's why I go at 5 a.m. Baby. 5 a.m. You don't got to deal with all Ain't nobody that. waiting on me at 5 a.m. Yeah. 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 But the flip side is, it's, I guess, motivating if mm-hmm. it doesn't discourage you. Though, yeah. Right. But See, you have to get to that point of, of motivation. Cause mm-hmm. it is discouraging at first. It's weird. But then you realize everybody's at their own place. There's no wrong way to do. fitness. Yeah. yeah. So listeners out there, if do fitness your way, and take your time. Like, if you need a trainer, get your trainer. Yeah. If you want to do Camp Gladiator or group fitness, do Camp Gladiator or group fitness. If you want to take a walk, yeah, that's great walking exercise. Is and it's underrated. Yeah. Walking is very underrated. It's and underrated. Easy, you know? 
Yeah, just go very on easy. And you know, you need to be outside. You got a pet. You got to walk them anyways. Mm-hmm. So you should be, but some people don't. Yeah, <laughs> I want to. I want to quickly talk about another aspect of the gym. Though mm-hmm. um, I mentioned earlier, I love the sauna. Mm-hmm. The sauna. I love the sauna for the reasons good for your body. Right. You get to see some eye candy, of course. There's nothing wrong with that. But I've been going to the gym for years, and the only thing that sometimes gets me is that some guys, gay guys, treat the sauna at the gym like a gay spa sometimes. Mm. Right. And because I've been I've been there so long, I just notice it more and more now. Like mm. my gym has so many guys that cruise. That's wild. That's wild to be. Yeah. I have a friend who uh he's on Sniffies and he'll be he'll text me and my friend Chris about Hey, have you seen this guy at, in in the sauna in the locker room? We're like, yeah, we've seen him. We we know him. But he's sending you a picture of their like dick yeah. or butthole. Like, are you like, yeah, yeah, I recognize that? No, I mean, like, <laughs> it'll be like somebody's chest, torso, whatever photo they have on Sniffy's. Because he just moved to Dallas a couple months ago, and he's always on Sniffy's looking around. And he works out at a different gym, but it's nearby. And it's just, I've seen so many things at that gym, like guys walking around with hard ons, um, guys who just circle the sauna wet area, and. I, I I understand it. I just wish, because I feel like sometimes it gives us a bad name as gay men. That go oh, to it gym. does. Because granted, I look. There's nothing wrong with looking, but yeah. it's like, I still want to be respectful. And like, this is a public it's a shared public space. Place. It's a public place. Like, and you don't know what the n- person next to you is. And there's children. How they swing. There's sometimes children at the yeah, gym too. I've oh, never yeah. been into the whole public thing. I mean. Ever. When I tell you I go to the gym and I'm so like, like blinders up right i wouldn't even know if anybody was checking me out which they never are but like when i hear about like cruising or people fucking in the showers i'm like it's rampant what there's a time and place for everything and you don't always have to like make everything so sexual and that's the that's the whole thing when it comes to our community and that's, yeah. everything, that's, that's a whole sexual. another topic too but yeah you're right right but yeah is it like that on the women's side women please I, check no in. I don't there think women any, if there's any women that are like I, they go to the gym or like or spas or saunas or anything how, f- how is it in the steam room with other women i feel like women are more discreet about it. if they were to do that they they're not doing i feel like they're more discreet about it I, that's an interesting topic because i really yeah. want to know i would love to know yeah because because men are so much more primal when it comes to sex i think we're we're just like dick but horny yeah, yeah. and gay that's, men just can't turn it off sometimes some gay men not all and i think some of them are like just by curious to the point that they just want to look right there like are on the lot. kids scale yeah where they're just kind of like Never touched a dude, but like, don't I, mind looking. I don't want to engage, but yeah, I think there's a lot of bi curiosity in the gym. For sure. A hundred percent. For yeah. sure. For sure. A hundred percent. Granted, I will go to Spa Castle. Yeah. And go to I the spa. Let like, somebody jerk me off, but. Shout out Spa Can Castle. we cut that out? Nope. I don't want to nope. say nope. that on <laughs> live TV. I mean, but that that's a, that's a situation to where I understand that. Yeah, that, but at that's the what gym, it's for. Like, yeah, yeah that's what it's for. I mean, the but is, at the gym, like, yeah. come on now. Come like, on. Come on. It's a time and place. Mm-hmm. Well, this was a great topic. Yeah, it really yeah. was. Anything else we want to touch on before we move? The last thing I was going to say real quick, I didn't get off my chest about food is um, one of my weaknesses real quick is I cannot have any desserts around me at home. I have a sweet tooth that is terrible. So if I have anything sweet, I'll eat the whole. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to make it past of the Oreos. Yes. See, I'm the opposite. Like, I don't I'm the, I don't have a big sweet tooth. Like Damn. I can go without eating candy or mm. like ice cream. Wow. Okay. So this is gonna like be that. easy for you, right? But I, but I like slushies. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I like hamburgers and French yeah. fries. I like yeah. the fried stuff. Like it's it's never the sweets with me. Like yeah. I can go without the sweets. The sweets are a struggle for me. The so sweets I, are a struggle, and I can't keep them in my pantry. Yeah, I don't buy anything. No. Uh. Uh-uh. But I will make shameful to- uh, drives to Seven Eleven and get a buy one and get one free king size like M and M's and Reese's. That's a good deal, actually. It's a good yeah, deal. <laughs> shout out 7 Eleven. We can say shout out everybody so we get a sponsor deal. Right. right. <laughs> Just keep shouting at right. until something sticks, Somebody. Right? Somebody. Shout out Planet Fitness. <laughs> shout out LA Fitness. Shout out Gold's Gym. Somebody give us money. What's your please. gym again, names again? Uh, Self Made Fitness, I believe. Shout out Self Made Fitness. Shout Where out. do you go? Lifetime? Lifetime. Shout out Lifetime. Shout out Camp Gladiator. What are some of the meal prepping companies? Uh, hello, hello, shout out Hello, hello Fresh. Fresh. Oh, and they love advertising and podcasts. Yeah, oh, yeah. the one that I do is Hungry Root, uh, Blue Factor, Apron, Factors One, Smoothie Factors. King. Shout out Smoothie King. They do meals. No, we don't shout out Smoothie King. No, but still, 
I mean, you might as well just go to we're, Sonic. We're Sonic. Yeah, Sound not, them all. Mm-mm. Not, okay. not Smoothie King. That's not it. Shout out Whole Foods. No, Shout out Vitamin Shop. <laughs> Tomorrow, Whole Paycheck. Uh-huh. Whole Foods is a scam. Sorry. Oh yeah. I just paid with my palm at Whole Foods this morning. Actually, though. You just what? You can pay with your palm at Whole Foods. I can't. I just gave them my fingerprint palm print. I can't. Can you just bring back cashiers like normal? (laughs) I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep stealing if you don't bring back the cashiers. Like. All right, let's move on to our social corner. What are we calling it, guys? What's on your timeline? What's on your timeline? What's on your timeline? Who wants to start? What's on your timeline, Antonio? This this has been. uh, Let's explain like what. Oh, what's on your timeline is yeah, sure. We should do that. So okay. who wants it? Okay, dumb. <laughs> so because we in the audience enjoyed the last episode where we talked about things that are going on in the world and current trends, basically hot topics. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to incorporate that segment into the end of each of our episodes. You know, just you know, to spice things up a little bit. So, Antonio, what's on your timeline? All right, what's on my timeline is it's killing my timeline is uh keith lee so keith lee who i'll, I'll describe okay, okay keith lee is if you don't know he is a former mma fighter turned food critic on tiktok he has ah, got like 15 million viewers and what he does is how he started was his career in mma he lost a couple of fights lost his contract wasn't doing so well started doing videos and they just took off and he lives in vegas or that's where he uh derives from so he initially started reviewing local restaurants in Vegas and pretty much it's called the Keith Lee effect where he would go to a restaurant, eat their food. He would rate it on a scale of one to 10. And then next day they would have a line out the, the door. The line out really? the door. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically he was saving a lot of small businesses who didn't have a lot of money to advertise or yeah. market and they just needed a push. So I and- think he hit one of his first videos that blew up was like he went to this pizza pizza place mm. and in vegas yeah. and they were like on the verge of like shutting down he really? was losing money yeah. every single day so keith lee went and just got food sat in his car and ate it and reviewed the food and loved the oh, food oh yeah i've seen him and yeah I've seen his him. businesses blew up yeah like they wow. couldn't he was just running out of orders he's run out of food like yeah um so yeah he's he's done that for a lot of small businesses and that's why they call it the keith lee effect yeah now he has changed his as he's gotten bigger and bigger he's had to change how he does things and he travels out of different cities um now he does review known restaurants now and still small businesses just to mix it up a little bit mm-hmm. but um i like what he's doing because like i said he's not charging people he's just doing this out of the kindness of his heart he's some he's a regular person so he's not like a classically trained chef yeah. he's not you know doesn't have a exquisite tongue he's uh-huh. just eating regular food that we will all just something that's in our neighborhood would eat and he's giving it just a regular review and of course there's been a lot of back and forth because sometimes the effect of his reviews hasn't been taken so well well i mean if you, on the flip side you're saying like he goes to this pizza place it's on the verge of bankruptcy he saves it effectively mm-hmm. there could be some business that he goes in there and like this is trash and well, he could, like ruin well, he's he's he won't do that about his reviews yeah. uh-huh. so there's been times he's not given a review publicly he tries to be constructive because he's given like not so favorable reviews but he tries to be constructive about it and one thing he always says is that hey you know what this may not you know it's maybe i'm not the target audience but maybe you are but he goes into depth about it so he's never in it to trash a business yeah, yeah. The the bad part comes with Keith Lee is not him, it's the internet, right? Yeah. So he has this huge following and the problem is people who are just online and we know how the bad the internet can be from like yeah. the barbs to the beehive and these mm-hmm. people who just were, you know, addicted to negativity. Mm-hmm. Um, they come into businesses and mess this thing up. So the only reason I want to talk about Keith Lee is he is in Dallas currently. He's been here for the last week and a half and people are excited he's here because I've tried one of his restaurants. I actually tried the first restaurant he uh, reviewed here. Mm-hmm. It's called Thunderbird Pizza. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, that? it's near White Rock Lake. Okay. Um, he didn't give it a bad review, but he wasn't very favorable of it. Mm-hmm. And Thunderbird Pizza is a Detroit style pizza where apparently they put the sauce on the top of the pizza mm-hmm. instead of like mm-hmm. under the cheese. So yeah. it's bready. It's very bready. It's mm-hmm. my friend, my coworker, me and my coworker tried it the same day the video came out. And he described it as like a cheese bread pizza. Mm. Okay. Which for me, the bread was crispy. It was, del- I feel like Keithley right now. It was crispy. <laughs> it's delicious. The sauce had like a sweet flavor, uh, flavor to it. So you liked it. I gave it my Keithley review, my Antonio review. I gave it like a 8.2 out of 10. Okay. Wow. I would go back, but he gave, he gave most of the food like a seven, like okay. a low seven something. And he was like, oh, I don't hate it. But so it's just interesting how food has changed now because it's like the gatekeeping of food review used to be like, uh, 
set towards like diners diving, diners right. driving, and whatever yeah, show was dives, called. Uh-huh. It was always like these highly produced things. He's taking it to just a regular person sitting in a car eating food and affecting so many places that would never have gotten, you know, publications. So I think it's I think it's amazing what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. that's badass. He found him like a little niche and yeah. he's like just going around and eating. Do you think that he gets paid by the restaurants? Or oh, like, no, no. no. So yeah. no, no, he definitely doesn't get paid by the restaurants, but uh, that he's making some money on TikTok. Yeah. Some of these things haven't gone so well. Like his trip to Atlanta was pretty disastrous. But <laughs> right, why? As someone who's from Atlanta, Atlanta has a robust brunch scene. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But the brunch scene in Atlanta is trash. Why? Everybody has weird, specific rules. They close random hours. Service is usually slow. Yeah, customer service is non-existent. Hit or miss. Yeah, Atlanta has customer service. I've always said this. Atlanta has one of the worst customer service of anything. It doesn't matter where you go in Atlanta. Customer service is trash. And he went to Atlanta trying to get food and had the most awkward. It was hard for him to get food. And some restaurants started to diss him and make videos back at him because he whatever. So it's just, I think the food industry, it's interesting how it's changing to where it's giving power back to people. The consumer. Yeah. The consumer has so much more power now. That's good, bro. Because actually I've been more, started to be more adventurous when it comes to going to food instead of being like, oh, I know that I like taco joint or yeah. I know that I like this place right down the street. Mm-hmm. Like wherever I am in the city, I'll just be like food near me. Yeah. Right? Same. Yeah. I was getting my tire fixed the other day because it was like flat. Right. And um, I just put uh, Asian food near me mm-hmm. and I, this place called Asian street food, basically, mm-hmm. bro, I spent $40. Like I'll definitely go back. Mm-hmm. It was like, good. It was really good. And it was just like, I would never know about this place. So I'm always like food open near me and yeah. I'm like finding new things. But like, so to, to, to your point, it's like, yeah, it's the profit margins for restaurants is it's so bad, low yeah. in the beginning. Even, I mean, and even when they're like really successful because the overhead's so high. Yeah. So like, Saving businesses and even him like giving a not mid review to this pizza place, like you still wanted to go. You right. were still engaging with it. I'm right? like, it looked good because like I said, I didn't I've passed that place a thousand times, never knew about it. Most mm-hmm. people now hadn't heard about it, but I'm like, well, let me give it a shot. And now mm-hmm. I'll I will go back because it was good. Yeah. So there was one controversy here oh, in Dallas. What happened? Messy. So he went to this lady, she has a like a food truck uh-huh. in the Garland area. And it's in the hood. Yeah, and I think I don't know like the context. So correct me. Well, he went out there. Like he was driving by and just happened to see it. And then when he went there, mm-hmm. there was like a girl that had a T-shirt on of of her the food truck who was outside braiding hair mm-hmm. for I guess the community. And then there was a guy who was outside her food truck cutting people's hair like with clippers, and he had a T-shirt on. I just said. And, what? Um, it's the hood. <laughs> and so Keith Lee went and supported, and he gave the 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 woman a lot of money, and he said, "Hey, I want you to give a thousand dollars to the lady that's braiding hair and the guy that's cutting hair. Um, you know, split the money up between y'all, and I'm going to give you extra money so you could just give out meals for free for the day, which he's done plenty of times. Yeah, which he's done before. Wow. The lady then decided not to split the money." Kept it, all. kept it all and she only gave a certain number of meals for free but mm-hmm. she didn't get she started charging people again for the meals so the people came out and said hey she never split this money with us so it blew up on tiktok the and barber the lady, never got paid the barber never got paid the late the owner of the food truck made a video doubling down on why she kept the money basically saying like they weren't working for her or uh-huh. anything. So she didn't feel like she needed to split the money. And she's providing it. And space. that's not, that's not exactly what Keith Lee told her to do. Yeah. And then apparently Keith Lee came out and tried to clear the air and was like, he, he, then he said, yeah, you were supposed to split the Yeah. Money. So basically she blocked her blessing by being greedy over $4,000. And the thing about it is his effect is so real that if she would have just given those two people that thousand dollars, she would have so many she, more customers. She'd have a line outside the door. So she, she, I, I hope she doesn't ruin her business, but she might have ruined her entire business. Right. Over four thousand. Did you see that she went out the next day and she posted a video saying, "I have to close early today because I don't have any customers." Wow. Uh-uh. So I think it is affecting a, her. But I mean, she blocked her own blessing. She though. blocked her blessing. Yeah, she should did. She but got greedy. And that's the thing about it is like his effect can be so great, but if you just. All she had to do was give that money and she would have a line out the door. Granted, I watched a review of her food and honestly, he kind of was low-key said it was mid, mm-hmm. but he was being nice about it. 
And I have to, I watch everything with context because I think sometimes he's a little nice to some of the food reviews, but I'm like, it's granted, we're talking about basic food truck stuff. Yeah. Now, again, sometimes he he's goes to always nice restaurants. Somewhat, he's always somewhat positive. He he's tries to be positive. He's not, he's never trash in a restaurant because he doesn't want to be known as that yeah. particular type mm-hmm. of reviewer. He wants to give his honest reviews, but he's never going to just trash a restaurant. Yeah. But the internet is obsessed with it. So I'm yeah. just, I, I'm wow. watching it back and forth play out. It happens every time he goes to a city, I something want that happens. I timeline. I do. Yeah. I, I don't know why it's not on your timeline. It's all over my timeline. Yeah. So that's Keith Lee. Greg, what's on your timeline? You got you got anything? Uh what's on my timeline? Um, I ended up staying up really late last night. I want to say three. I was like hey chat at 3 a.m. online. Um watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It just dropped on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. And they're not doing the thing where it's like one episode at a time, right? Which I don't mind. I don't mind. Wait, it, how many but- did they drop? They dropped the whole full season. Oh, okay. Like cool. Is it 10? Okay. It's eight episodes. Okay. Yeah. And so each episode is like 60 minutes. Um, Solid. It is fire, dude. It's so good. It's Donald Glover. And I don't know the, the Mrs. Smith lead's name, but she was in the show Pin have, 15. Have shout out. It's on Hulu. It's like she played this like middle school girl as an adult, her and her best friend. And it's, uh, it's funny. It's like uh, Dave. Little dicky humor. Okay, okay. Um, have, so she is the lead, and he's the lead, and it's like they're secret like agents. They don't know exactly who they're working for. Just like the movie, they're paired together. They don't know each other, um, and they're doing things like dropping packages off, um, and then a building would explode, mm. shit like that. And th- like the missions get more and more complicated, and it's crazy because they're falling in love and dealing with all these like relationship issues. So it's, it's interesting because it's like kind of action and suspenseful, but then you got this other side where they're like getting to know each other and like kind of falling in love and yeah. then like so, seeing the, seeing the bad side of this other person. So they fight a little bit and it's just like funny action, shocking, like a little bit of everything. Yeah. Violence. I can't violence. wait to watch it. because It's on my timeline. So I'm excited to watch it. What is it on? It's on Amazon. Amazon. Okay, I'm gonna check it out, but I just I don't like remakes. What? I don't like remakes, like especially remakes of, of of something that I actually really enjoy. Like Mr. and Mr. Smith is like one of my favorite movies. It's a classic, yeah. And I just hate when they like have to touch things. If you're gonna remake it, remake it with the original actors, even though no, <laughs> that's never no. gonna happen. That's yeah. just called part two. That's never right. They're not in the same room. But the, the show doesn't even sound like it's Mr. and Mr. Smith. They're not even married. They they it's not like it sounds like they both know that they're spies. They just don't know who they work for. I think, oh, I think it's I just the whole premise of what, it isn't what the original was. What, Granted, what is the original a, premise? But I just so think the original you're too premise stuck on it. they were married. Yeah. They're married so they were couple. actually a married couple. But yeah. they didn't know they were. They didn't know that they were spies. Okay. Like, they and, didn't know that, that each other were secretly spies. No. Okay. Angelina okay. went to work. They both went to work every morning. Uh-huh. Back home. They came back home and, you know. Yeah. yeah. We're a couple. Okay. <laughs> I just think you're too stuck on the original. I'm Because cause you love it. No, I'm, no. Because I, I love it's a It's one of, it's a classic movie. And it's, it's like. Dude, it's a real It's two of my favorite actors. Right. Like, in so the same film. What I'm saying is correct. I think you're. You're so I'm in love with the movie in the actors that are in the remake. You so will I, be so it again. doesn't make me want to watch give it. Them a chance. I think you love the movie so much. You're too stuck on the original because you love it so much. You can't let go of what it is. That's what your. That's the problem. I see you have it. What's your favorite movie? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> forty year old version. I don't know. And what if they remade forty year old version and it was terrible? If it's terrible, it's terrible. It's terrible, but I would watch it. I, I would try, give, give it a, it a shot. Right? Right? Why, why touch it in the first place? Is this is something that back in the day, whenever they would do re- reboots of mm-hmm. movies, yeah. It was like a straight to DVD type of thing. Oh, Airbud Two. Yeah, this this Bring feels it like five. it should have yeah. been like a straight to DVD type of situation. Like, no, because it is a Donald Glover. Is not straight solid. DVD. I love Donald Glover, and I okay. think he's a he's a great actor. And everything I don't that he puts himself in, in, but everything he puts himself in, fire, is fire. I was gonna say that it's solid. Everything. It's relevant. The culture. It's you're gonna and see I'm it on not your saying timeline. that you're wrong. Yeah, but, but it's I'm funny. Saying it's millennial. When it comes to something that I like, would enjoyed how the original was mm-hmm. i don't want to see a remake of it <laughs> all right it's a good couple show bro this is what i would say you might need to take like another couple of weeks before you watch it i think you, you need to cleanse your brain a little bit of the original mr mr smith because i think it's still so you can't watch it right now i think you need to dive in because <laughs> you're gonna be even more annoyed in a couple of weeks when everyone's uh, talking about how fire it is yeah. it's gonna happen you're right. it's gonna blow up this Just is like it. a new class T- go up tonight I'm not lying are y'all going out tonight are y'all doing anything of course i don't think are. so throw an episode on Okay, we're, we're not drinking right now. Oh wow! 
You, st- you oh, weren't wait, drinking we last month. Do this game night. Wait, what? you weren't drinking last month. But that did not last. It lasted. A week. <laughs> I was gonna ask, but I didn't want to check. <laughs> no, it lasted a week. You know, I what just it- didn't lie to myself about it. I wasn't gonna do it. Yeah, I tried. I think something happened where I like went out with coworkers or something. And I was like, I cannot be sober for this. Yeah, it's hard to be around people who are drinking and not drink. And it's hard. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. The thing is, if I'm not drinking for a month, I'm not going to the bar. Like, I can't just you go can't. hang out at the bar and be chill with people. Are you gonna do that, dumb? You gonna go out to round up sober? I don't know. Before we end, can you please send us the nominees for the Oscars so we can watch? So we prepare it's on for the, your it's, it's, my my it's good on the son, internet. Son, um, it's on the good <laughs> World Wide Web. Yeah, it's like you just, just a Google. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to prepare for yeah. Greg's. But we can just. Oh, am I still doing so. that? What are y'all doing you, for the Super Bowl? Uh, I don't have I'm going to a Super Bowl party. <laughs> I got concert tickets, and I didn't realize it was on the 11th. Which to is who? The Super Bowl. Jamila, somebody that I... Who's performing on the Super Bowl? Somebody that I'd rather watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. How much was the ticket? 30-something. But, oh, I, can, I wrote, you can, you can. but I wrote Nancy in. She got a ticket, so I feel bad. I, I oh, so now you got to go. Yeah. So why'd you ask us what we're doing if you already got plans? I'm not going to go to the concert. Oh. I want to watch the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. I'm, I don't oh. have any plans, but I may be watching that at a friend, maybe. Yeah, we should just do something low-key. I don't I mean, know. You I'm already going, have plans, yeah, right? Yeah, I have plans. Oh, on the subject of football, I got edited pretty hard <laughs> last week, and I just want to end with this point where we're talking about, you know, media, and I'm talking about award show. I'm cut this, too. And then <laughs> do not cut this. Do not it, cut it's this. It's going to come out during the extended version. So you no, are fine. No, just let, let me really quick. Let Greg get a shot. T- where where are we my, at time wise? Let me get my bar. Let me uh, where are we at? shot fire. You really like don't like beef at all. Hour. We're an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, we got to wrap this up. Okay, you can cut it, but I'm just going to say it into the mic because I just got to like let it out. Talk your shit, Greg. I'm talking about the Oscars hosting an Oscar party. And, <laughs> and Tony's like, that would be like the official gay card, right? Because hosting a gay Oscar party is like the gayest thing you could do. It is. And I was like, well, I host, you know, RuPaul drag race viewings all the time. So that's pretty gay. But I forgot to mention, I'm the fantasy football champion this year. You are. And I was in third place and I beat out first and second place. You did. Dom and Dom's dad. Dom's dad was undefeated. He was superb. Yeah, like yeah. he was the he, still he was the Ravens, it. right? He went from first to fourth. I was the Chiefs. I was never in first. I just went to third. So. Yeah. You can cut this. I was a Falcon to give off. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Greg was upset because I edited that part out. But well, I mean, that I'm episode a very was complex too long, human you being, know. you know. I'm a co- you wouldn't have edited it out if you had been the champion. Yes, I would have. Because that conversation in general went over 10 minutes. So I had to I had to cut that. That's fair. You have final say and you do the work of editing it. So that's fair. That say it true. again. Say it say it. Tell the people in the back. Lying on your dead mama. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, we should uh, leave it on that, silly. on that note. Yes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Oh. Yeah. And real quick, please check out the new artwork for our uh, yes. cover. Yes. Oh, wow. Give us some, send us some, Shout out yeah, some feedback. Artists. He made me yoked. Yeah. Greg, what country is he from? Um, Pakistan. You said Ukraine. Ukraine. I, I about to say I can't it, it went from Ukraine to Pakistan. Was, he did not make y'all as jacked as me. And the reference picture wasn't me looking like all buff <laughs> and stuff. Like I'm okay not being jacked in my animated photo. But I want to be real jacked yeah. in my animated photo. I look good. That's my, my I look, motivation I look, I look for good. fitness. I look good in my I think picture. we all look good. But no, I think uh I just wanted like something fun. Like, you know, the the logo was great, but I want to add just us to it. But we don't want like our real pictures. No, I love it the way it is. So yeah. I think it's fun to just have. So you know, kind of a visual of what we look like somewhat. And those are pretty good photos. Yeah, yes, let us know what you think of, of, of the of pegs. the new artwork and set up, Um, go check out our YouTube page and subscribe. Yes. Let me finish underscore pod on all socials and just Google the Let Me Finish podcast on damn near all platforms. We out here. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Until Bye. next time. See you next time.